Ah yes, April Fools. The day of the year that things happen on the internet and you don't know if they're true or not. Pretty much everything that you see today will be a boldface lie. And nowadays it's not just your friends pulling pranks or your ex-girlfriend of 10 months ago calling you and telling you you have a child. No, but now it's big companies like Google who are getting in on the action on tricking us all. It's over a 400 year old tradition that had to do with the switch to the modern day Gregorian calendar and people laughing at people who failed to adopt the new calendar so they put fish on their backs. Yep, history is weird. It's weird. So in the spirit of not lying to your face and making a tutorial on a game that I cover, instead, let's take a look back at eight amazing times that Nintendo fans and gamers were tricked on April Fool's Day. These aren't really in any specific order, although they are kind of going from, like, least convincing to most convincing. Yeah. Number one, The Legend of Zelda Netflix series by Smosh. This 2015 trailer narrated by the guy who does honest movie trailers is a comedic look at Link, most likely from Ocarina of Time, going on a vague adventure to save Zelda and defeat Ganondorf. Home, venture into that creepy forest and probably die trying to save the world. But you're only 12! Let me do what I want, Mom! This trailer makes many similarities to how it would be just like Game of Thrones with plenty of incest jokes. I've always loved you, Saria. But I'm her sister. What? Ugh! Starring Chris Hemsworth, less muscular and less successful second cousin, and Neil deGrasse Tyson after being exposed to gamma radiation as Ganondorf. Where are all the black people at? From the moment you start watching it, you know it's fake, so it's lighthearted fun to watch. Get a chuckle and move about your April day of delusions. Okay, that part is boring. Number two, Google Maps Pokemon Challenge. In 2014, the day before April Fools, Google released a viral video in the style of a job recruitment to become Pokemon Master. The video showed off people going to real locations and using augmented reality on Google phones to see Pokemon in the real world and catch them. The vice president of Google Maps, Brian McClendon, said that if anyone captured every Pokemon in the 48 hour time limit, they would get a job at Google known as a Pokemon Master. To find the world's best Pokemon Master. But the really amazing part is that they updated their app to actually include this feature, sort of. Either on mobile or desktop, you could look around to different areas all over the world and catch Pokemon by clicking or tapping on them. You didn't actually have to go there. Also, two years later, we got a similar idea by them that you got to play Pac-Man inside of Google Maps. That's pretty neat. Now, it's unclear if the creators of Ingress, Niantic, saw this video and decided to make it a reality, but two years later in 2016, we got Pokemon Go, which was basically what this video said it would be. So did Google predict Pokemon Go? Or did Pokemon Go get birthed from this idea? The winner will start at Google on September 1st, 2014. We're eagerly awaiting your participation. After updating, open the app, tap search and press start to begin locating the many Pokemon hidden throughout the map. Number three, Pokemon Go 8-bit. Last year, Pokemon Go and Niantic announced that they were going to bring the most immersive graphics experience possible to your smartphone. Experience Pokemon Go like never before with cutting-edge 8-bit graphics. Registering approximately 8K pixel density, the chunky squares in each pixel provided realistic detail and unbelievable definition. Your Pokedex will feel lifelike in ways previously unimagined on any handheld device ever created. And that's what it was. But they were 8-bit versions of the Pokemon that showed up in the search area at the bottom right, as well as the Pokedex. The prank was so popular that they decided to keep it around for a full week or most likely the amount of time it took to make it, they wanted to make sure that everyone saw it. Number four, how to enter a guardian in Breath of the Wild. In 2017, with Breath of the Wild being less than one month old, GameSpot released a tutorial video on how to pilot a guardian. The video was formatted like a regular tutorial, narrating and warning of spoilers to boot, including on how to get things that you need for the fake thing that you can't get. The video shows a recipe of four dragon parts and a giant ancient core that gets you an ancient guardian key. That's gonna be one fang shard from each of the three dragons and one giant ancient core. If you don't have these items, don't worry, they're not too difficult to find. Head over to a cooking station, toss all four items into the pot, add a little dash of love, and bam! You should have yourself an ancient guardian key. When next to a guardian, there was a prompt to enter appearing on screen. 
there was a quick black screen, and then we're treated to a first-person view from inside the Guardian. It was done with one of the many bows that zoom in on the target. They released a whole video on how it was done. It's actually kind of genius. And truth be told, I was so focused on the center area, I didn't notice how crisp the Sheikah engravings are at the top and bottom. Hey guys, remember me? With how clean and crisp that they looked, that means that there was no way that it was real. But at a quick first glance, it was pretty dang believable. I just feel bad for anyone who actually tried to do it because, well, giant ancient cores are a little hard to come by. <laughs> You're welcome! Number 5, The Fairy Ocarina in the Lost Woods. Published the day before the GameSpot video in 2017, a YouTuber by the name of Mr. Hero uploaded a 30 second clip of Link in Breath of the Wild entering an unmarked tree in the Lost Woods. That tree then brings him to a large open field in the style of the Lost Woods with a single chest in the middle. Inside is the Fairy Ocarina. There's no clip of using it or explanation, but since the video was registered as March 31st, it didn't occur to me. And I thought it was legit, and I spent about two hours looking for a tree that didn't exist. It was very convincing, so convincing, that people did not respond well in the likes versus dislikes. But aren't those the best April Fool's jokes? Number 6, Sonic and Smash. Back when the internet still required this sound to reach it... The video game magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly wrote an issue that said that Sonic was an unlockable character in Super Smash Bros. Melee on the GameCube. The requirement is that you had to defeat 20 opponents in Cruel Melee, which is a feat in and of itself. The article included a screenshot of the character select screen with Sonic in it, as well as an in-battle image. Many people believed this and tried to do it, and Electronic Gaming Monthly would later have to confess that the whole thing was just a hoax. This is a time where one tweet debunking something didn't exist. However, those who were able to prove that they actually beat the challenge did get a reward from Electronic Gaming Monthly. Players were sent a copy of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which was the first Sega game on a Nintendo console. This is most likely because they were very upset and wrote a letter and included a picture, so... All's well that ends well, right? Number 7, Yoshi in Pokemon. Now, Electronic Gaming Monthly was only to follow suit from Nintendo's in-house magazine, Nintendo Power. At the all-time high of the hype of Pokemon in 1999, Nintendo Power included a full-page tutorial on how to get Yoshi in Pokemon Red and Blue. It involved having both a red copy and a blue copy, two Game Boys and a Link Cable. Red trades away a Dratini to Blue, Blue evolves into Dragonite, Blue goes to where Mewtwo was in Cerulean Cave, uses a Firestone on it, and it evolves into Yoshi. It would retain all of its stats, but be listed as number 999, and its sprite would be one of the dinosaur from Super Mario Bros. When I was younger, I actually remember owning this issue of Nintendo Power, and I saw it, and I think I tried it because I did have all the things required for it. And the biggest pain in the butt was evolving their Tratini to Dragonite, since it required so much experience. And then when it was finally done, I tried to use the, the, the Firestone, and it was like, nope, can't be done. And I was, I was, I was a tricked little eight-year-old. And number eight, The Legend of Zelda movie trailer premiere. Over a decade ago, when YouTube wasn't the place of quality content like it is today, in 2008, IGN came out with a somewhat convincing movie trailer for The Legend of Zelda. And for goodness sake, don't touch anything. Unlike the Smosh video that came out some years later, this one had very serious acting, and some relatively good CGI cutscenes, and a real compelling force behind it. People would watch this video, and they would think that this was a reality. There were some scenes that seemed a little a little rough around the edges, but something that people can look past if it was a good Legend of Zelda movie. Also, keep in mind, we just came off of the Mario Brothers movie, so literally anything could be better than that. And as good as the video was, it was sad that it was just a joke and not a reality. 
So there we are, eight times that Nintendo fans and gamers alike were tricked on April Fool's Day. Is there something I missed? Was there a prank that was done on April Fool's for a Nintendo character or a game that you're a huge fan of? If so, leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.